restricted by one pixel here or there, or you can remove the noise pattern. That way you can easily avoid detection by this kind of approach, simple approach. We need to have some way around that thing. And there are a lot of other things which you can also do. So our experimental setup which the results I am presenting here is uh, we have four cameras and we captured around 300 images from each of those cameras. Two of them were of the same company, Nikon and then we have Canon and Panasonic. Then we find out the reference pattern as I told earlier. And the classification, we do the classification on the rest of the images. Those are separate from the training images. We did training on 100 images and testing on 200. So this is the result. In this graph, the y-axis has the correlation values corresponding to different pictures with different camera patterns. X-axis has the picture number and the first of those 100 images are basically training images and then we have testing images, the rest of them. These cross marks in green color are the correlation values correspond to the Noikon's camera pattern and as we are clearly seeing that these values are much higher than the those correlation values corresponding to their cameras. So this technique gives us a average accuracy of around 99%. Here is similar result on Panasonic camera. Here also we are seeing that we have a clear demarcation of two classes and we can find out which camera has generated that image and achieve accuracy of 98%. So this is about source camera identification. Let's now move to scanners. If we closely look at this scanning system, it will be easily seen that it is very similar to the camera scanning pipeline. We have an original placed on the glass plate and we have a light source and lens system. This light source sends, us the, sends the light to the original which reflects the light and the reflected light is focused on the imaging sensor which can again be CCD or CMOS. So if we look it at we have a similar structure here. We have a CCD and we have the lenses and filters and we have similar things here. Now there are certain subtle differences also which we should keep in mind while designing our system. The imaging sensor used in the scanner is not a two dimensional grid as was the case with the camera. And, second, and this imaging, linear imaging sensor is translated with the help of a motor over the whole image to give us the complete image. And the second major difference is whenever we capture an image with a camera, we are basically using the complete CCD array. But when we are using a scanner, most of the time we are using only a portion of this linear sensor array. Let's see how we can use these things. So since the heart of both the things is uh, CCD or CMOS image capturing, capturing sensor, so they are expected to have similar noise characteristics. That is we will have a similar model as we have here in case of cameras. So if you use similar characteristic and use a scanner's noise as fingerprint for the scanners, we should be able to identify the scanners. One thing to be noted as earlier pointed is that here a linear sensor array is translated over and over to generate the complete image. So every row of the noise extracted is expected to have similar characteristics. So what we do in our preliminary experiment, we scan a, a number of photographs uh, with uh, four of the scanners at the native resolutions. That is for two of them was 1200 dpi and for the other two, two was 4800 dpi dots per inch. And then we divide these complete images into small blocks of sizes 1024 into 768. <coughs> We maintain here that these blocks uh, B0 and B5 and others in the same column will be having similar noise characteristics because basically they are generated by the same portion of the sensor. And these blocks B1 and B6 will have a different noise characteristic compared to B0 and B5. So effectively we can treat them as two different sources and we, to, we want to discriminate between these two sources. So here is a similar training phase. We have these images. We do the noise extraction and we do the averaging to find out the scanner reference pattern. And then we use these scanner reference patterns in the classif 
classification phase. For source scan identification, we have the unknown image. We do noise extraction and correlate with all the existing camera uh, scanner patterns in our database. And the pattern which gives us the maximum correlation is uh, is determined to be the source of the scanned image. See the results on it. Uh, we have two scanners, HP Scanjet 6300, two, two of the same model and configuration. That is, and this HP Scanjet 1, 1 is basically the first column of the first HP scanner. And then we have HP Scanjet 2, 1, which is the first column of the second HP scanner. And we have one UMAX scanner, which we also divided into two columns. So effectively we have six sources. And we want to differentiate between these six sources. And here are the results. So, this seems our source scan identification. Let's go to the next problem which I told earlier. That was image source classification. Here, as I mentioned earlier, we, are, we want to utilize the difference in the geometry of the imaging sensor. In, in the case of camera, we have a 2D imaging sensor and in, in case of scanners, we have a linear imaging sensor. So, Digital images uh, captured with the camera will be having a two-dimensional noise pattern and since as with every sensor we have uh, the incorporation of noise in the me measurements done so we can divide this noise into two portions this random component and the fixed component by random component what we mean is the, the portion of the noise which is not constant over the uh, frames captured or documents scanned um, and the fixed component is the that component of noise which is going to remain fixed with different scanned documents so for the scanner the linear array is translated over the complete picture to give us the complete scanned image so we will be having a periodicity in the noise extracted from the scanned images corresponding to different rows of the scanned images while there is no reason to expect uh, similar behavior in the columns of the noise extracted because those columns essentially correspond to different sense sensing pixels. On the other hand with the digital cameras there is no reason to expect neither in the direction of columns nor in the direction of rows these periodicity in the noise patterns. So the basis of our classification technique is the difference in the geometry which lead to the differences in the characteristic of the noise pattern. Okay, so we do the noise extraction, we have the image, we use a denoising algorithm, currently we are using a wavelet based denoising algorithm and then we get the noise corresponding to that image. Now we extract certain features from this extracted noise and send it to the already trained SVM classifier that tells us whether this image is coming from a scanned class or the non-scanned class. Now, what are these features? What we do is uh, this n sub k represents the noise corresponding to the image i sub k after doing the denoising and subtraction. We found out the average of this average row of this noise, and similarly, we find out the average column with this noise pattern. And then, what we do is we correlate this with this average row with all the other rows of the noise and found made a feed a vector row correlation and similarly we made a vector column correlation what is expected that these row correlation values will be much higher than the column correlation values in case of scanners but not in case of cameras and images generated by computer softwares so here is how we use correlation and then we have the feature vector which are the first order statistics of this row correlation and column correlation we take the mean maximum minimum and a standard deviation of these two col uh, columns of vectors that way we have total eight dimensional feature vector corresponding to every image and we send it to the classifier that tells us which class they're going to belong to 